Hey Kurt, I had you here for the last episode and I, you know, I made you do some hard work for that episode. That's why I bought a tractor, you know, so I don't have to pick things up to move them. You know, I promised Christy that. I did when I got a tractor. I said, you know, I'm getting older and I don't want to have to lift as much stuff. I've noticed it hasn't turned out that way. I end up lifting a lot more now that I have a tractor. You have heavier stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I can relate. I thought maybe it'd be a good experience for our viewers for you to kind of try this self-leveling loader. You've never used a self-leveling loader, no, right? Sure but haven't. you have a lot of experience with a traditional non-self-leveling loader, right? I would say a fair amount, yes. Tell me about your equipment. I have a Kubota B2650 oh, uh, with a front-end loader, and uh, it's what? It's orange. Yeah, it's that's really what I pretty. was afraid of. It matches your pallet racking and your, <laughs> and your steel stuffs too. So. <laughs> no, you've got a B2650. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a nice machine. It is a good machine, yes. So, and you have the loader. Mm hmm And what have you done with it? I've moved dirt. I've moved rock. Um, I back drag things to smooth them out. Pick things up from a pile, make a pile, build up a berm. Okay, all sounds sorts good. Of things, yeah. So what we're going to do here for this part of our real world testing I kind of wanted you to do this because you've never had experience on a self-leveling loader. I wanted to see what you just thought after doing it. We've had a pile of dirt here we dug out of our pond and we kind of use it for our, for our testing. Over a long period of time, we're taking this pile of dirt down to the other end where it, where it lies really low to try to help with some of our flooding problem. I mean, it's pretty weedy here. You might just want to dig some of this up and pile it. You might want to take some on down to the other end where, sure. uh, where it needs to be uh, put there eventually. It depends on you know, it depends on what you, what, what you find most interesting. And, you know, as you learn something about the loader, just stop and, and let's talk about it. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to curl. Yeah. That's all the curl there is. That's all the curl there is. Okay. Looks a lot different from my bucket. <laughs> it looks a lot different from the non-self-leveling. Okay. I wondered how long it would take you. I've, I've made sure that I haven't biased curd at all because I had already seen this, but I wanted to see if, if it was something that he found, well, difficult. So, yeah, that's, that's all this loader has. That's interesting. Well, we'll see if it'll haul a load around to the other end, right? Okay. All right. I think you ought to be able to get a little bit bigger bucket than that, even with that. I'll even try it again. Okay. Again, you may need more throttle with this tractor than okay. what you're used to. I'm eventually going to bring that all up to this level right here. I do think we have the hydraulic pressure set below the factory specs. I've not operated a 1025R that is operated at this level. I'm sure Kurt, being an orange guy, he's probably going to say, this tractor doesn't have much strength. Well, that's why. Like it's hard for you to get a full bucket. Yeah, I agree. I'm having a hard time getting a full bucket, and I think part of it is because I'm used to having more curl. And yep. I, I think a person could get used to it and maybe get better with it. But yeah, it's definitely I, I'm, I'm struggling. 
Okay, we'll dump this one, and then maybe I'll try a bucket okay. or two. Yeah, I'd like to see a, the pro. <laughs> ah! Good luck, sir. Yeah, I'm able to get a bucket full, or well, pretty close to full, but I'm like you, I, I really appreciate that curl back. Yeah, and it seems like it tends to spill a little bit more than I'm used to as you go to yeah. the... So I don't see much advantage to the self-leveling bucket for moving a pile. Well, it, I it agree, seems... there's, there's not much advantage. The question yeah. is, is the disadvantage so severe that um, even the advantages are outweighed? Hard to say yet. I mean, I think where this would really shine is if you're moving pallets around. Okay. That that sort of thing. Well, we'll try that in a minute. I, okay. One thing that I have seen about the the curl and the dump, that range of motion, that doesn't have to be that way. It's not just inherently in a self-leveling loader. Uh, my 520M on the on the 5075E, it 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 will curl back pretty nicely, and and the Case 580 that my family has, the backhoe, it'll curl way back. And one other example is the Australian loader. There's a Titan loader in Australia. They have to have self-leveling loaders in Australia. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. They have a federal law that you can't have a, or that any loader that's sold has to have a self-leveling bucket for safety reasons. Interesting. Right. Now you can see the safety factor, right? As we lift this up, on a, on a regular loader, you have to be careful because as you, as you lift it up, that big heavy it clot of dirt could come back some things back on the hood on yeah. the hood or worse or, yeah on let's you. say it's a log it roll right down roll right the loader, the loader arms, frame yeah spoil your whole day yeah and the next one <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they that's why they mandate that in australia i'm glad they don't mandate it here but anyway that titan loader it curls way back and then dumps uh, let's see the max dump on this just for So I believe the non-self-leveling loader will, will turn back, back more than 90 degrees. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed in that. I wouldn't mind trying to get another scoop. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know I'm getting used to a new machine, too. <laughs> sure. I mean, no one's foreign. judging you. I don't, yeah. I don't even think the viewers will. And a littler machine. Not huh? only is it a new machine, it's a smaller machine. A little bit. And it's exceptionally weak because of me dumbing it down. It feels a little anemic. Now you have one of these heavy hits tooth bars yourself, right? Sure do, man. Things a game changer. It'll tear right into about anything. It really, boots. it really makes your tractor feel stronger. It does, and even when you're back dragging, you pick up a lot of sticks and, and pulls yeah. roots. When you, yeah, yeah. It looks like a broom or something. It's, it? it's really. Uh, it makes the, the. It's another thing that adds versatility to the front end loader. Yeah. Did you use that coupon code? I did. TTWT. <laughs> I think it was 5%. Both <laughs> are well, on it. Goodness. On this loader, curl is where all the strength is. Yeah. So you get in there a little bit and you start to curl and maybe pry a little bit into that hard dirt. I still, I want more curl. Should I, I think I could get used to it. I like the machine. The tractor feels really good. I really want more curl. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, 
doesn't feel completely dissimilar to mine, but then I'm like, why aren't you coming back? Why aren't you coming back? Yeah. And I, I think I could get used to it. I probably, I'll probably i never get a scoop as big as yours. But um. <laughs> Well, I was pretty mean to it, right? I mean, that's, that's how you do it. And, and naturally, you're not going to be as mean to this piece of equipment for two reasons. Number one, it's not yours. True. But number two, it's the first time you've ever used this particular or this style of equipment. I mean, right, you've always run the orange, and it's just different. Mm -hmm. It's not worse. It's better. It's just different. And so, yeah, you're not going to be as comfortable on it. So that that makes sense. But I, I agree with you. I think uh, more curl would be better. And, you know, we've seen the downside. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should try the forks and, and play with some pallets. You've got experience with pallet forks, right? A little bit. Um, on my machine, it's it's not too difficult to kind of keep it level as you're going up. You can curl and lift or Yeah, you hear and... what he's saying. He's bragging on those two functions at one time. <laughs> not really trying to brag. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we and haven't so bought there's... his dinner yet, so he's still trying to be kind. <laughs> no, the, it's it's a difference, right? Um, I think that's where this will really shine because it will get a person through that learning curve a little faster. Yeah. Um, that using two uh, two directions at the same time, it, there's a pretty significant learning curve there. Yeah. Now, for those it's of you that, that don't know what we're kind of teasing about here. Um, the deer is known, especially this small, the subcompact, the deer is known for not being able to do two functions at the same time very well at all. You have to be very good with this lever. It's taken me a, a good bit of practice to be able to do it. I can make two functions happen at the same time relatively easily. I can't make them at the exact rate I want them to happen easily, right? right? I mean, so so keeping something perfectly level is a, is a bit difficult because I'm I'm like trying to find that that exact spot. I found it myself more difficult on the Kubota, but I suspect it's because I didn't have, like we were just talking, I didn't have that experience with that, yeah, that, with, with that particular uh, item. So, okay, let's go play with some pallets, see Sounds how like this fun. looks. Okay, so you have forks on your tractor, right? I do. Okay, and you use your tractor to move any anything like that, right? Yes. So you know some of the weaknesses of forks on a tractor? Yes. I mean, forks on a tractor are wonderful. We're not absolutely, absolutely. But uh, I use them. I use the forks almost as much as I, as I use the bucket. I would say I use them more. Really? Yeah. I mean, uh, forks. For one thing, you can use them for brush and a lot of other stuff. For too, sure. You know? Moving logs. I don't have um, a grapple, so yeah, forks is the way to go. Yeah. Um, but the negatives of forks on a tractor, as compared to forks on a forklift, is that minute control and the ability to see them. I can't see my forks, and that's one advantage I see here with the artillion frame and the smaller tractor. My hood's in the way, and I've got a big, um, my, my frame is, uh, it's a skid steer loader frame. Okay, so, so the frame has kind of got steel across it. Yeah. Well, a skid steer loader frame is going to have that, because yeah. it's got those big plates on both yep. sides. Yeah. So what we would like to do is, I'd like, I, see the tooth bar up there? I do. I just place that up there after I move the tires, but I'm not going to move it, because that'll make it an extra challenge, right? We got four tires on each side, and then you got uh, the tooth bar up there. Uh, if it falls off, you lose. Right. No okay. doubt. Now, if this works as advertised, I don't have to curl or dump or anything. It's just put the forks in and yeah, of course, pull, the, you know, pull the, the lever back, right? Yeah. <laughs> he makes fun of me saying lever. It reminds me of my first wife. She she left, so she was a lever. So. Of course. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my. It's a dad joke. I've got a few. <laughs> I have five kids, so. So she, she was a lever. She was. She took the dog. She took the dog, left me with the kids. The dog ran away two weeks later. <laughs> Good dog. <laughs> Good dog. Did he come home? No, no, he didn't. I never saw him again. He, he was a good dog. <laughs> oh, I miss that dog. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Back on track. <laughs> yeah, you know, the hardest thing here is the um, getting your forks level to start with. It seems to me like, especially when you're, you know, you're, you're lowering them down to where you can't see very well. Mm -hmm. And in, invariably, I've got them pointed down or pointed up too far. And Christy's yelling, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> so I, I think that's what's going to help here. I, you know, I've, I can, I can clearly see the forks here. Um, now your level indicator, I believe, is a little bit off. I think the forks are close, but your level indicator's indicating I'm curled some. Is that level? Well, I, you know, I don't know for sure if the bucket level indicator works for forks. I don't In either. other words, those forks may be a different geometry for sure on the angle, so I don't know. They look like they're a little high in the front, okay, but not that much. So I think the level indicator is probably not perfectly accurate. So I want those tires and tooth bar moved 
like back here somewhere on the concrete. Okay. And then the grapple, you'll have to grab it from the other end, but the grapple then stick it right in here. Okay. And then just want to hear what your, what your thoughts are compared All to your right. own forks. Can it really be that simple? What's that? I, I said, can it really be that simple? Well, I don't have to curl it all. Let's well, see. and now, you're, are you going to dump well, your teeth off? Because I would, right? Because I would end up... Okay, that's about level, right? Yeah, close enough, right? Yeah, this that's, is that's where nice. you're making your money, right? Yeah, I this, mean, this is where the self-leveling loader is paying. That's itself. where it shines, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That, that's easy. And I tend to throw stuff off because I curl it and jerk it a little bit. Right. that you have to set it on top of that little pallet. Get it up okay. higher? Get it, take it all the way up so you can set it on top of that little pallet. Okay. Obviously you can't set it on there for obvious reasons, but... Should I just do that right here? No, just drive it on out okay. there and essentially do everything except for set it right down. Oh, that's so awesome. I, yeah, I'm liking it now. That's great. That's a piece of cake. That's a piece of cake. I, I like it. That's, well, that's it, so simple. It was easy. It yeah, was one motion. Yeah. And you know, one thing I noticed is it's safer. For sure. I, I made a little bit of adjustment to, to level. Actually, I'm a little bit curled now, but, but yeah, that's, that's usually so how we carry easy. a pallet. Yes. Right? I mean, usually yeah. you carry a pallet a little bit curled back yeah. towards you. And my, my pallet or my fork frame is a little bit taller than yours. And that gives you some safety when it's against that frame. But yeah, that's that's a nice feature. I can see how that's a lot safer. Okay, so overall, um, in the prior episode, we did the lifting capacity. Uh, we saw maybe a little bit more capacity on this loader, but really not much. Uh, seemed like about the same with our testing with the bucket on. Surprisingly similar, yeah. Yeah, we thought it was going to be a, a lot higher with this loader, and we didn't see that. With the dirt and, or materials in the bucket, your thoughts on that? I don't see an advantage to the self-leveling frame uh, for moving a pile. Um, in fact, I would say there might be a disadvantage because, in my opinion, we lose some curl capacity. Um, and I think now you didn't as really you didn't mean hold it. You said capacity. Did you curl really mean? curl stroke? Yeah. Length. Um, range of movement. You might range. Say. Yes, the range of motion is a little bit limited uh, compared to the loader I'm used to. But you demonstrated. Yeah, you can still get a, a, a nice full bucket. Um, but I would need to get through that learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like to curl back more too. Um, so I think that's that's the the area that you and I would both be a little hesitant uh, for wanting an MSL. But, but when from, it comes to forks, for moving things around with forks, my goodness, this this is uh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, would I would be in the market for this. Yeah, I think uh, given how much I use forks, I'm I'm a little hesitant to to say that it's better for forks, but not better for the bucket because. Most of us don't realize how much we're going to use forks until that's, we get them. That's true. I see time and time again online people say, well, I don't, I don't have any pallets. Why would I need forks? Well, I, I, yeah, I like the quick, quick release uh, bucket because, yeah, I can drop the bucket, pick up the forks, and I, I do that fairly frequently. Yeah. Are you lifting pallets? Uh, not usually pallets, no, but I have a, a few. Okay. But, and that's one thing I've, I've learned to, to pick up more 
more pallets, right? I find free pallets or I get sent one with or whatever, but I, I pick them up more and more and I end up beginning to store things on pallets. And, you know, even things that aren't really palletized at all, like for storage in the shed, I will, uh, I will put my compound miter saw and all the stands that go with it and, and you know, a lot of woodworking stuff together on a pallet. So mm -hmm. then when I want to use it, I'll go get that pallet off the shelf and everything will be right there ready for me. For sure. It's really unrelated to, to something you would typically put on a pallet, but once I have it. Mm -hmm. And then forks, again, are, are just useful for so many other things. Carrying brush, uh, you can dig with them to some mm -hmm. degree. Um, pry. Pry on stuff, yeah. Yep. If someone makes a decision to get a non-self-leveling loader because they don't think they're going to be using forks, that that's where I'm a little hesitant, right? Agreed. And even though I'm through the learning curve on my front-end loader that's not self-leveling, this is so much easier, and I can see it being safer that I think it's I think it's worth considering. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's a home run. I thought when we first were talking about this, we first saw the announcement, I thought this loader was a home run. There was no way that you, you know, again, I thought there would just be thousands of non-self-leveling loaders for these little tractors sitting in dealership lots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't think it's that easy of a decision. There's no question that it's safer mm -hmm. and easier to handle for power yes. forks. Kurt, I really appreciate you joining us. You know what <laughs> I'm going to do with Kurt now? I'm going to take him out for cheeseburger. Hopefully a cheeseburger, but I may have to get that through the uh Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, I understand. The cardiologist? Yeah, yeah, the cardiologist may he may be watching this episode okay. and so we may have to kind of We're be going in out for uh sushi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And veggies. Yeah. <laughs> cabbage, lots of cabbage and celery, negative calories. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love celery. I hope you guys have found this informative. I'm open to any comments you got, as long as they're not safety related, in the comments section below. And, you know, we're going to keep this loader, and we're actually going to send our non-self-leveling back. Um, so we're going to see it in more activities all the time. That's, that's what we're going to use now until something else changes. So we'll have more information. You know, like you say, will, will I get over that learning curve of not being able to curl as much? Or will I find this leveling self-leveling so fascinating with pallets that i'm just never can use another one again you know a non-self-leveling so anyway thanks for watching everybody we'll see you next time on tractor, tractor time, time with, with tim, tim. whoops up whoop you broke my pallet! Can you believe it? A guy just comes in here and willy-nilly breaks your pallet.